coming up on Small Town Big Deal. You're going to dig this do-it-yourself construction site. It's like tilting you. Then we're all fired up over an iconic American brand that's still going strong after nearly 150 years. We're not going to make quota. <laughs> that's for sure. We try to help turn clay into an American classic. Welcome to Small Town Big Deal. I'm Rodney Miller. And I'm Jan Carl. You know, Rodney, when I think of you, often I think about boys and their toys. <laughs> well, I am a kid at heart, but don't knock something until you try it. You might just really dig it. <laughs> this is not your typical construction site. Sure, there's plenty of earth moving equipment and plenty of dirt to move. This place puts a whole new spin on heavy equipment. Good job, man. Push it. See how that works? Dig This is a sandbox for grown-ups. Only, instead of playing with Tonka toys, you get to drive the real deal. When you first told people your idea, hey, I'm going to start this business, and I'm going to let, you know, completely inexperienced people jump on giant heavy equipment, what did people say to you? Yeah, they thought I was nuts. And um, especially <laughs> the insurance people I was trying to get on board as well. I bet. I was building a house in Colorado, and I decided to do all the excavating myself. And so I uh, had a blast and then realized that I'm having a, this good a time as the amount of people who would like to do this. So. Where can you find Ed and his multi-ton toys? Well, Henderson, Nevada, right next to Las Vegas. Next, we meet our rides. In this corner, Brutus, he's Rodney's. And in this corner, Jake, he's mine. Each excavator that's weighs in at tens of thousands of pounds of pure that's power. That's what opens and closes. Whoa! Our instructor, Walt Logan, shows us the ropes, then has us do what he calls a push-up. Yeah, bring it up until one of us is scared. <laughs> I'm scared. Wow, right there. Oh, perfect. You know why we do that, don't you? To see how gullible you are. <laughs> and you guys are, because you will never, ever, ever catch me doing that. Wise guy Walt will referee Jan and me through three head-to-head -head contests. Okay, it's not exactly a level playing field. Rodney has experience. I mean, the man owns his own bulldozer. And me? I've never even sat in the seat of a piece of construction equipment in my entire life. So here's the deal. Rodney's gonna win three out of three. No doubt in my mind. I can't wait for round one of our Dig This competition, Digging Holes. For some strange reason, Walt seems to spend a lot more time on the headsets with Jan than with me. Hey, Walt, what did yes, you say again? So, so what you do? Right hand to the left. Right. Whoa! Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> there you go now, right hand. I forgot how to dump it. Right, right hand. I'm having trouble remembering how to make the scoop do this. Jan was saying, I don't remember, I don't remember. So she did a lot of that uh, while Rodney was doing a lot of digging. Yeah, you are. You're doing just fine, buddy. There you go. Bring it right around. Well, I'm just curious. Who dug the deepest hole? Oh, you did. I can't tell, so... Well, uh, hers is deeper than yours is. Yours is longer. Walt needs to get his eyes checked, because my hole was definitely deeper. Let's go to the instant replay aerial view. Yep, round one of our excavation extravaganza definitely goes to me. So now it's time for the Tower of Tires, or terror, depending on how badly you perform. I get off to a fast start, picking up giant tires and stacking them on top of each other. I am actually ahead of Rodney, but then Bingo, now, right the hand. claw of my bucket gets stuck in my last tire and just won't let go. Right hand, right. I guess bucket control is not my strong suit. At this point, I'm very happy that Walt has a gift for making newbie drivers feel successful, even when you mess up. I like the way you did that without having to count. <laughs> the next contest is backhoe basketball, and Rodney is a bit of a ringer. I should have an edge here. I coached basketball for many years. We're going to pick the basketball up, 
We're gonna spin around and we're gonna put it in that tire that's beside you. I jump out to an early lead. Oh, bingo! Jan is stuck playing catch up. All right, yours is in, Jan. And then it happens. The miracle on dirt. Oh, man. You were robbed. That shot off the rim means Rodney can't catch up. I win the basketball game. After a day of fierce competition, Dig This offers a unique opportunity for team bonding through creative destruction. It's time for the aggression session. In the aggression session, you write things you don't like on an old car. <laughs> then you crush it. The way you'd like to destroy bad things in real life. I wrote cancer and evil. I wrote heart attacks and hate. And on the hood, we put ALS, a disease also known as Lou Gehrig's disease. OK, you ready to ruin a perfectly good car? I'm getting out some aggression. Oh, yeah. OK, Jan, it's all yours. Yeah! We had a great day at Dig This, and we learned a few things, too. Lesson number one, crushing a car can be surprisingly therapeutic. Lesson number two, operating a 20-ton piece of construction machinery can put a smile on your face and make you feel like a big deal. Up next, we're jumping from the construction zone to the assembly line. And learning what it takes to serve up over 400,000 cups, plates, platters, and bowls a week when we return. Welcome back to Small Town Big Deal. You know, Jen, I really love it when we do stories about how it's made because I enjoy factories so much. I do too, and the company we're focusing on today, well, they've been around since 1871. They're still family owned, and in fact, at the turn of the 20th century, they grew so much they had to leave Ohio and head across the river to West Virginia. And you know what was unique about that is that same company that's not in the bridge building business nope. built this suspension bridge across the Ohio River so their employees could get to work, and it's still in use today. This iconic American company is the Homer Laughlin China Company, probably best known for their American classic dinnerware known as Fiesta. To say they're keeping it in the family is an understatement. It started as a partnership between two brothers in the mid-1800s, and now, some 150 years later, it's still family-run. I'm a fifth generation uh, family member of the ownership of the company, the Wells family. It's, it's kind of amazing to, to think about all my family members and, and other people that have walked down these halls, too, before me. When founder Homer Laughlin retired in 1897, it was Katie's great-great-grandfather and his financial partner who bought the company and soon determined they were running out of room in East Liverpool, Ohio. That forced a move across the Ohio River to Newell, West Virginia, which is only about 40 miles northwest of Pittsburgh. Their new factory became the largest pottery factory in the world and prompted the company to build that bridge just for employees to get to and from work. Fast forward to today, and the company is still passionate about dinnerware and cranking out about 400,000 pieces a week. Brian Newland has been with Homer Laughlin for 42 years, and he took us through the step-by-step -step process for their in-house production of everything from cups to bowls to plates and more. This is calcite aluminum. It comes to us in the bags. So that's clay, and that that's the base of everything. That's it, what it starts yes, with. Yes, it is. It's just powder. Almost looks like talcum powder. I never would have guessed it started as a powder. Water is added to form clay. And then the fun begins in this 37-acre facility. And this is our pressure cast machine. We make dishes on this machine. Some of our other machines that we have, we make plates on. And then it's squeezed together under pressure, and the water is squeezed out of it. And once it's formed, then the doors will open up, the robots will go in, take the piece of wear out, and put it on the dryer. Well, those robots are pretty cool. So 
but some pieces still require a human touch. Hey, Rodney? Yeah. I'm sorry, we're not gonna make quota. <laughs> That's for sure. Hey! I'm getting better. <laughs> Just when I thought I was getting the hang of it, it was time to move on to something even harder. The expert and expedient staff, aptly known as handlers, kindly gave us a few pointers and put us to work. Or maybe we should say, tried to put us to work. Put it just below the lines and try and keep it straight. When you do it that way, you tend to stretch it a little bit. Yeah. You try to keep it straight like that. I was just making it for yeah. like a man you, with you a bigger hand. hand. Yeah, right. Not okay. buying that either. Not buying it. <laughs> How many do you do a day now? These ones, I do about 170, 180 dozen. After the various pieces are dried, then the glaze is sprayed on. And that happens in this machine. Kind of looks like a carnival ride gone crazy, but it makes sure no spots are missed. Then the dinnerware is lined up and it gets fired in the kiln. The interior temperature can get up to 2300 degrees Fahrenheit. And lastly, some pieces get decals. Others get hand-painted custom decorations. Then it's off to get fired one more time to lock it all in. Kevin Manypenny has been a decorator here for 43 years, and he definitely had his work cut out for him, trying to give us a lesson in plate decorating. And like I said, you got the tip and the heel, and you're gonna hit with the tip, and put pressure to it to hold it against the plate and, and let it go with the plate. Oh no, whoa, that was bad. So I'm guessing I don't even have to tell you that it's a lot harder than it looks. We even got to try our hand at making a plate and cup with a small town big deal logo on it with decals they made just for us. I'm guessing it's taking me about 25 times as long as it does Pete, who was my instructor. But finally. It looks pretty straight. Does it? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up, you know we can't leave without a friendly challenge. I'm sure I'm going to do really good in this. You know, let the best woman win. So what do you think is the rarest color of Fiesta? Cobalt, tangerine, medium green, or chartreuse? Your answer when we come right back. Just before the break, we asked, what is the rarest color of Fiesta wear? If your answer was C, medium green, you are correct. Welcome back to Small Town Big Deal. We're in Newell, West Virginia, home to Homer Laughlin China Company and America's most collected dinnerware, Fiesta. The company introduced Fiesta wear in 1936. This trendy Art Deco inspired dinnerware with the concentric rings caught on quickly. But it was the glazes that really grabbed consumers' attention. The original dishes came in vibrant red, yellow, cobalt blue, green, ivory, and the following year, turquoise. Over the next few decades, new colors were introduced and the old ones retired as preferences changed. Everyone thought that was the end of America's beloved dishes. But fans started fervently collecting vintage pieces, creating a resale market. And then in 1986, Bloomingdale's approached Homer Lachlan to bring Fiesta back, and it's been thriving ever since. So how do they get those dynamic colors Fiesta wear lovers are so passionate about? Here's a clue, it's not paint. We call them inorganic pigments. Inorganic just means that they are minerals from the ground. Um, basically what we do every day is we play with dirt and all these pigments are, are just, uh, you know, brightly colored dirt, depending on the chemical makeup of the pigment itself. Different chemicals will give you different colors. Fiesta now introduces a new color every year, usually retiring an old color at the same time, but not always. A member of the Wells family gets to pick the color name. The new annual hues keeps the color combinations endless. Since creating inspired table settings is what Fiesta is all about, we just had to create a little friendly competition out of all we've learned. Okay, so the Fiesta Wear table setting challenge is on. We have five minutes to create our best look. I'm sure I'm gonna do really good in this. You know, let the best woman win. <laughs> ah, on your mark, get set, go. Done. 
Now, I got to get an A for originality for my flowers. Yeah, that is super crafty. Right there. <laughs> Very, you know, I give you. I didn't know you had it in you. Okay, but I'm just saying. I, I saw you flirting with the judges. That's not allowed. <laughs> you have no utensils at two of your plates. That's for the children. <laughs> and we're having fried chicken. You know, in some states, it's against the law to use utensils with fried chicken. So, judges, what a do you decision. decide? I pick Rodney. Yeah! <laughs> the flowers just put it over. Well, it's about all the colors and the so, celebration of all of it. That's one judge. What about the other judges? I agree with her. <laughs> so, two out of three. Two out of three. So, I no beat one? you. Wait, no one? I voted for you. Thank you. Okay, I was a little hard on Jan there when I won. I'm kind of ashamed of myself, but I wasn't expecting to win. I think the ladies picked Rodney as the challenge winner just because he's such a fish out of water setting a table. But speaking of a challenge, there's serious competition among Fiesta collectors to score the rarest finds. In 2002, a turquoise onion soup bowl sold for $8,800 on eBay. We have a lot of really dedicated collectors. We know people that have added rooms onto their houses to house their Fiesta oh, wow. collections. One collector, Rhonda Ogle, took her love for Fiesta wear to the max and tied the knot here. The wedding took place in the company's museum. It even included a custom bouquet using Fiesta's salt and pepper shakers and a cake decorated with Fiesta colored flowers. But we have to point out, it's not just Fiesta Ware that has kept Homer Lachlan in business all these years. Back in the 1950s, the company shifted their emphasis from consumer dinnerware to commercial dinnerware. To this day, hundreds of hotels and restaurants across the USA use Homer Lachlan China. And it seems fans of anything made by Homer Lachlan are always on the lookout. They're all over the country. They have a plate turners of the world. It's always on Facebook where people have gone to different restaurants, turn a plate over, Homer Lachlan, they'll take a picture of it, say where they're at. Okay, so now I know when I go to a restaurant, I'm gonna be officially a plate turner. Does it say Homer Lachlan? From plate turners and collectors to multi-generational family employees, they all agree there's something special about the Homer Lachlan China Company. We've got wonderful products. We're so proud of being here in our community, being American made, and it'd be hard for me to find a company to work for that I could appreciate more than that. <laughs> As we leave, a sign proudly hung over the employee factory door catches our eye. It's a permanent reminder of the dedication and excellence of all who enter. We'll be right back. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of Small Town Big Deal. You know, I already had so much admiration for the folks that create the American classic Fiesta wear. But after we tried to make platters and put on handles and paint trim, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't think their employment offices are going to be calling either one of us. No. And as for the competition to dig this, well, I am still celebrating my win in the Traco basketball game. Yeah. <laughs> Join us again next week when once again we celebrate the great stories from across America. Nobody will know. No one will know. I know I'm not a neck fair, so I went with square plates because I'm a little square. <laughs> no. A little salt or pepper. No, you know what? I'm Paula Dean, reincarnated. It's all about the butter. As long as you got <laughs> butter, you're good to go. Are you going to trash my Simple. table? Did I trash your table? I didn't trash your table. Uh, no, you didn't, but you missed a good opportunity. <laughs> <laughs>